Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, hello again. My name is Ray Gary, and welcome to another edition of the Curry Cafe. Curry Cafe, we gather a group of experts to talk about what Rick just said we talk about. Um, So as a rule, we're always trying to find answers to life's persistent questions. Um, Maybe we should start out today with with a tradition we started weeks ago when we started this program, and uh, we've done it about every week, and it's always seemed to work out well, so um, I think we should do it again. And that would be going around the table and introducing ourselves. And you would start with me. My name is Billy Furuichi, and I am also a, a host and producer of a show that, well, I finished all 15 episodes, so I'm still waiting for the muse to tell me what my next topic is going to be. But it's great to be here with you all at the Curry Cafe to discuss what our topic is. Perhaps you could visit a vortex and then you will get an inspiration. I probably It will come to you from the ether. It will. It'll just emanate up like I I could be one of the muses from from the distant past. Yes. Mm. And Mr. Ray just buried the lead. Is that what you call it? He said <laughs> vortex. That's going to be the. So we're in the whimsical and fun today, I think. Uh, yeah. And serious. And for, some, um, well, for some people, this is deadly serious. Okay. Man. Well, for sure. So my name is, did I say this already? Rick McNamer, <laughs> volunteer. And hey, by the way, if you want to text in your questions, comments, please, we've got the text line 541-661-4098. Go ahead to my left. Hi, I'm Kathy Chestman. I'm interested in the question of why are there vortexes on Earth, and do they affect humanity, and do they affect our moods? And there is a lot of evidence that they do affect our moods. They also apparently affect a lot of choices humanity has made about buildings and where they've put things. So if anybody's interested in any of these questions... You know, like where they put the Great Pyramid. Okay, that's considered a vortex, so it was chosen like that. So I'm going to go back to, to Gary, and would you like me to give the out, uh, an outline of that question? Well, I think I have an outline, or okay. the, uh, at least the most logical outline as to why the pyramids are where they are, probably because the real estate was available, <laughs> and probably at a very, very good price, because that's not exactly a prime location to live. But go ahead, yes. Oh, well, no, my overview is that there, that chakras have a lot of effects uh, or claimed effects on Earth. So there's the geological effect, like um, do people put buildings there because of something with the geology? And then there's the um, mysterious theory. Uh, are there vortexes there because of some outer space visitors from the Pleiades? And um, do UFOs give us some evidence of why there are vortexes there, as well as those like giant Um, paintings on the ground that you can only see from the air, but you can't see on the ground. You know, things like that. Those giant animals in South America. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Then there's the geological answer of what is a vortex, and then there's the spiritual answer. So then there's the the scientific includes the geology explanation. Um, The metaphysical includes why people want to meditate where there are vortexes, why they go to Sedona, why they go to Taos, why they go to these places and why they built a great pyramid there where they built it in Giza. Mm-hmm. And um, then that's the, um, the meditation theory, the UFO theory, that's the mysterious theory, and the scientific theory. Wait a minute, wait, wait. Okay. I'm sorry. Did you say the UFO is the serious theory? No, mis- <laughs> mister- mysterious. Oh, right. mysterious. Oh. I have a lisp, sorry. I'm yeah, sorry, so no, we got. Didn't mean to interrupt. Well, I did mean to interrupt. Mysterious and metaphysical. Metaphysical includes meditation, people going there to get energy or transformation in their lives. So those are the things that vortexes get used for. Nobody knows how they got there, except one geological theory is that ley lines cause the magnetism, and the ley lines also cause other things that make it desirable, like for building Machu Picchu. 
And I read that in a National Geographic magazine. Okay. So Machu Picchu is where it is because it's got ley lines that junction like a nerve center and extra magnetism, but it made it possible for them to get water in Machu Picchu, which is on top of a mountain where you normally can't get water. Okay, what are ley lines? Cracks that go all the way down to the magnetism of the earth, I think. That's, what I, that's my understanding from what I have read today. Okay. Mm. First time I looked up what ley lines are. And, and could, could I just add a little... Please. Um, w going back to what you said, Catherine, about... an equal member <clears throat> of this group, you can Thank add you so anything much. you want. I, I just didn't... subtract I, anything that's already been said. But I didn't want to step on her toes. Okay. It's just I want to I wanted hearken back to what you said um, a few minutes ago when you first started and talked about how the in the metaphysical understanding of of the vortices that are around the world, that they emanate from the chakras in the uh, earth. Now, I have a story that yeah. kind of relates to that. Yes. Is that okay if I tell oh, my yes. story? Well, Perfect. It, 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 all right. I want you to remember, write it down if you have to. It's okay to say anything you it, want. <laughs> I, it, I, you are it equal member is of this group. okay. All right, great. So, all right. So, my late husband, Isama Furuichi, was a master chef. And he and I traveled around in our RV, excuse me, looking for places where he could work. And one time we were in Colorado and he wanted to get onto the coast. And so I said, okay, I'm going to try to find some place for you to work along the coast. And I got out the map. This is, this actually happened and you might not believe it, but it did. I got out the map and I, he, and I kind of just drew my finger down along the coast across Washington and across Oregon. And I got to this place right at the very tip of Oregon before it went into California. And there was this bright yellow circle that just, it, it, it and it wasn't drawn onto the map. It, it simply was the light that emanated from this little town right here. And it was called Brookings. And I said, <laughs> gee, I think I'm gonna call see if there's any Japanese restaurants in Brookings. And I did, and I found Cafe Kitanishi and talked to Beth. And she interviewed Isamu on the phone, and she hired him on the spot. Now, my my point being that, that I think there's a vortex, vortex right here in Brookings, mm. and I was feeling the the vibes. I was feeling the energy that was coming off of the map that was guiding me I, to Brookings. I like your explanation, but also you might have been seeing an aura from Brookings, which might be a totally different thing from a vortex. It was an aura coming from the map and the name Brookings on the map. Well, yeah, that, that's a that's, whole that's, different that's, area. Th that is, but I think it's also possible that, yes, that Brookings, possible. Is, Brookings is right but in this. But people don't come here to meditate. <laughs> I'm not, I, I beg to differ. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't come here in per, or only to meditate, but when I moved here a little over six years ago, this area, now, I, it, again, I didn't know, and it could be a vortex, this area, the ocean, the mountains, the wildlife, it, it's pretty special. Mm -hmm. it and uh, oh, it yeah. just, it gave me a very calm feeling. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And my wife, my late wife, uh, is the one that introduced me to this, these kinds of things, if you I call it spiritual world, softer side um, metaphysical, I guess, mm -hmm. but we, we spent a lot of time. We, uh, I lived in Reading with her for a while, and then we moved to the Sacramento area, but always drew back to Mount Shasta. Mm -hmm. That was our favorite place, uh, uh, along with uh, um, Fort Bragg, along the coast. But Mount Shasta, to me, which is one of the world's vortexes, if yes, it I is. Believe. Yes, and I know all the other legends about the Lemurians, but all that's fun stuff, and I'm. <laughs> Who, who knows? I'm not going to discount it. But every time I did feel the energy up there, and of course, so did my wife, and we ventured, did all the rock shops and the crystal shops and all the antique shops, and it, it is. It's a vibe. It is. And mm -hmm. uh, and I've always just loved that area. And I have real quick railroad story, believe it or not, a railroad story. Um I was drive, driving a truck for the railroad, delivering material. I came back from Klamath Falls. One early morning, going to weed to deliver, and that '97, I had never seen the mountain. It was an early spring; it was just beautiful. Mm 
Mm. And just looking at that mountain and the, the surrounding area, I tell you what, man, it almost brought tears to my eyes. It was so beautiful. Yeah. So hmm. anyway, that's just the feeling I get or got and get whenever I'm around Mount Shasta. And it's a volcanic um, mountain. Yeah, still yeah. alive, I and, believe. And or, I, I think a lot of the vortices around the world are placed in the, those areas. Absolutely, that are volcanic. Volcanic. onto something. Mm -hmm. That volcanic mm -hmm. hole goes yeah. deep. Mm -hmm. reach, and in the mountains where it reaches magnetism, it's going to push it to where, where it reaches us yeah. and changes the growth of trees, which way they spin when they're growing. Oh. It changes other plants' growth sometimes. But it definitely is a place that people want to visit. Mm -hmm. And they come there for the purpose of meditation. Now, we can, mm -hmm. we can come to Brookings and say, wow, this is a great place to meditate. I did that. But I never thought it was a destination place for meditation. Mm -hmm. The whole time, all 20 years I've lived here, I never thought it was a destination for it's a destination for people to get away from the hot weather on i-5 that's well, what it's it, a destination of <laughs> uh, but also it's a it depends on who you happen to uh, hang around with i mean i i came here and started hanging around with people who had come here specifically because it was a place to meditate yeah so and i have family members now that at once i moved here to come to see me mm -hmm. Maybe it might not be exactly to meditate, but that's the feeling they get to. They just want to come up here and, and hang out. Mm -hmm. And not only because it's uh, not hot, uh, it's just absolutely beautiful with all the, the, like I said, the flora and the fauna. So I'm sitting here listening to you three <laughs> gushing over this kind of stuff, and I'm thinking, woo -woo. <laughs> uh, I had never felt like that about no place. No, I did feel that way about Alaska, but not in this spiritual way. You know, for, for me, it was, uh, uh, so, I can't remember the, the poet's name, but it, the freshness, the farness, the freedom, you know, the idea of having, getting up in the morning and going out and having grizzly bears uh, tracks in my front yard was... That gives you the shivers. <laughs> it, it was exciting to me, but uh, I, I've never had these feelings. Uh, there are lots of places I like, right, the Everglades, um, the desert, but... I'd like to ask you, Ray, um, did you feel drawn to Denali and did you ever go uh, partway up it or in any way climb on part of Denali? It's a huge mountain. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, I lived uh, 30 miles from the entrance of the park and just to get to the base of Denali to start up it is, is an expedition. It doesn't like you can't drive up to it. Okay. It's kind of... But it was uh, when I initially moved there. I thought it would be uh, a neat idea to 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 uh, join a crew and, and climb the Nile. Mm. Most of the the track that people take is not a technical climb; it's just a, a sludge. So it's you just, might have just been missing the vibrations by thirty miles. <laughs> yeah, that could be. <laughs> or, as my wife would say, <laughs> you uh, she always did the left brain, right brain thing. Mm. Now I don't know which side. I have or Ray has, but obviously a little different because I felt that those kinds of things. And some people don't. Yeah. I mean, you, you're, you can still be inspired by the, the, the beauty and the whatever, and, but just not feel that spiritual connection maybe. And I, I'm not a, a very hugely spiritual person, but I have felt that way with, like I said, my wife. And the only other uh, place that I've been that I was looking for of uh, the world of vortexes I'm not a world traveler. I think we have some here other than the uh, uh, being in the Air Force in, in Thailand. That was my only place. But anyway, was uh, Sedona, Arizona. Mm -hmm. We went there a couple of times. And yes, I felt the energy down there. And it, again, it's what absolutely is, a beautiful place. What does this energy feel? Like? I've been there. I used to go there twice a year. And for me, it was an incredible place for photography. Yes. Because mm -hmm. it is just unbelievably beautiful. Uh, and wildlife as well, but I, 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 I never felt this energy thing. It, well. well, you know, I <laughs> honestly, Ray, the the thing about energy is, I think you you want to, if you want to feel the energy, you can become attuned to it and open yourself to the energy. It's not something that's automatically going to come to you. And that's where meditation comes in because meditation is a specific practice to be able to open yourself up to the energies. And the, it's not like you're going to all of a sudden feel like you're an electrified being or anything like that. I, I think 
energy, if you can feel the energy of the, the space around you, then you are more in tune with nature. You might have been feeling those energies without recognizing or being able to define it as such. I guess that's possible. There's, mm -hmm. I mean, there, um, I, it is possible. S Sedona and the Everglades, another place like that, I have felt, you know, really good there because I liked it there. I don't know if that's what you're calling it. Yeah, an awe of the area and and a feeling that um, a feeling that you you are at one with your surroundings that you're not separate from the trees or the flowers or the or the um the other plants or the birds or even a bee you're you're at one with them that's that's the way i feel yeah okay you're you're uh reminding me of of sometimes i've been in the everglades where the everglades is being destroyed and destroying all the oh, little yeah. animals i i love and um you know, and and I used to ride on this trail, on my, my bicycle, and when I'd come upon animals, I used to almost apologize to them, saying, "I'm sorry, in that very long, you're not going to have this place to live anymore." That, there you go. So I I would define that as feeling the energy of that of the place of the Everglades. Yeah. So it's a matter of just definition, I think, in your mind. Okay. So I have a story now, um, and uh, you talk about um, identifying with animals. And some people identify so much with one animal, they call it their totem. Mm -hmm. To my mom, it was the bear. And she encountered bears in the woods. Maybe that's why she decided that, she was, that that was her totem, or maybe she decided before she ever met a bear. But she climbed to the, almost the top of Mount Shasta, I believe there was snow that prevented her from going the last bit of the way. She, d I do have pictures of her standing on the very tip top of a mountain, but um, I don't think that. It no, she, it is Shasta. Yes, yeah. she did stand on the very top. Yeah. She was. She must have been very determined. There was snow in the last um, quarter mile or two t or tenths of miles. Anyway, she uh, climbed many mountains on the Sierra Trail the, in the Sierra Nevadas, and um, when she went up Mount Shasta. Um, she was um, one time with her husband, her, my stepfather. Uh, another time she was with a group. So she didn't do it alone. But she did encounter a bear on the trail on Mount Shasta. And um, to her, she was on, you know, on a quest for her totem, maybe. Maybe not for the spirit of the mountain. But I'm not sure because she got nature was my mom's religion and <laughs> though every encounter close encounter with nature was religious experience to her but some people are you might call them seekers seeking transformation seeking to get rid of a ptsd or a tragic experience or a tragic loss and there's they go to these places as seekers they aren't there really to meditate they're there seeking transformation so that's um being in the condition of a seeker ray uh, changes your what you're going to experience when you get there. Holy men discovered these places, uh, people who are exalted by their tribes. But those holy men would then say, go to that mountain, seek your vision, you know, or especially down in Sedona, you know, where their mountains were everywhere. They had a legend for every jutting rock. They had a story behind every cave. And the holy men would t send the young people there the young warrior, and, and say, you go there and seek your vision. So being a seeker is a state of mind. I want to go into chakras later, but I want to find out if any other people have stories about seeking and with vortexes. And, and if you, as a listener, have uh, something you want to contribute, uh, you can contact us by text at 45, I'm sorry, 541 661 Four zero nine eight five four one six six one four zero nine eight. Operators are standing by. Kathy, you said that you talked about uh, religion being nature. That's pretty much how I felt my whole life. Uh, and again, when I got here, it just uh, filled my spirit, if you will, even more. I had never lived in a place as beautiful as this. Mm -hmm. um, so I was really happy to land here, and uh, 
whatever you want to call it, higher power, your mother. I'm a big uh, fan of, I call mother nature. I think the mother of the world. Yeah. Just my personal choice. And uh, But I would say that would be my religion too, being out in nature, just observing all. And that's where I think I might be a little open to this energy mm -hmm. field. Um, yeah, in different places like that. So I have. To, I was wanting to ask too, since we do have some. I think we're old travelers here. Any other? Has anybody else been to? I, I know there's different uh, vortexes. I came up with about seven or eight, I think. But like the 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 Giza pyramid, the Mayan ruins in Mexico, Tulum. Mm -hmm. Oh, Billy, the I've been there. Yeah. Hale, uh, oh, Haleakala and Ma in Maui. So Haleakala. You've been there? Oh yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, Uluru in Australia, the Big Rock, uh, oh, is, uh, right. one of those vortex places, yeah, and holy place as well. Okay, that people wanted to meditate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Haleakala is one of those vortexes. Again, it's a volcanic, of course, it's a volcanic mountain, and when you go up there to see the sunrise, you get such it's such an immense feeling because you're. The, the crater is huge, and they have these uh, barriers around the edge, so you're not supposed to go down into the crater. But you can see how huge it is, and it's so beautiful that there are flowers that grow down there. Put, um, proteas grow in that volcanic ash, and they say it's one of the only places where those proteas will actually grow. And they also say if you do go over the barrier that's put up and pick up a rock and take it home with you or something, you're in big danger because, oh. mm -hmm. yes, Haleakala, the, um, Pele, the goddess of fire, will will zap you for sure. And Billy, the, they say the same thing about Ayers Rock, also called Uluru. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Uluru. Uh, and uh, the tourists used to swarm all over that rock trying to climb to the top and taking souvenirs away. And the Aborigines, the native people, couldn't do anything about it, had no power in that in those days. When they did get power in, in the uh, Australian government, a voice in there, uh, they got to have that forbidden and call it a holy site and only belonging to them and not to the tourists. Mm -hmm. But what were the tourists there for? I mean, was it a challenge of climbing? Did they feel the power? But they weren't respectful of it. They didn't know the source of this, of the, you know, their birth story. And so um, that it's much better that that area is restricted. And some yeah. holy places are too easy to damage. And that's why they have to be restricted. Um, I'm going to tell you about some of the buildings that are built in chakras of the earth. And when you say um, Gaia and Mother Earth, Gaia, Ga Gaia, when you say <laughs> Gaia, um, it's an old habit to call her Gaia. Oh, sorry. But when you talk about Ga Gaia uh, and Mother Earth, um, you're basically saying that she's got a body, too. And so if we have chakras, she has chakras. Yes. Yeah. And so the root chakra is Mount Shasta. I don't know who compiled this. It was in a, in a video that I watched today. Um, but I practice chakras myself, chakra meditation, and it's very, very helpful to me. Anyway, Mount Shasta is the root chakra, which means um, it's the base of the spine in people. Mm -hmm. And um, it's um, grounding. And, you know, it's your connection to Mother Earth. But the next one, Lake Titicaca, is the sacral, which is passion and sexual desire. Uh, so Lake Titicaca, there is a, there's a chakra in South America. I'm not sure if every continent has a chakra, but um, Lake Titicaca, um, uh, the sacral chakra mm -hmm. in, the Andi, in the Andes Mountains, very high up in the Andes Mountains. Mm -hmm. um, Uluru, Australia, is the solar plexus, which is personal power and strength and determination mm. so um and uh, if if you were to uh look at these on the earth and sort of make a diagram there are ley they, lines between them do they line up yeah well there are lines between them that have significance mm -hmm. i haven't gone into that deeply yet but um now talking about buildings being built in these special places stonehenge is the heart chakra mm. and the um, Glastonbury uh, Chapel, which um, is the origin of, of part of the um, Arthurian tales, is part of the complex 
uh, area of Stonehenge. Hmm. Uh, that's called the Glastonbury Chapel or the Glastonbury mm-hmm. something tower. And it's on a conical rock. So that, I mean, it's on a conical hill. So that was probably formerly way long, long ago. It was probably a volcano. Um, so again, there is a reason. Uh, the throat and voice chakra is the Great Pyramid at Giza. So um, I don't know who labeled these that way, but, you know, uh, they also say Glastonbury is the third eye. So that's pretty close to, um, to whatchamacallit, Stonehenge. <laughs> Stonehenge. Glastonbury uh, is pretty close to Stonehenge, and it's a different chakra. So they do say the third eye chakra at the beginning of every new age moves one-twelfth the diameter of the earth. I don't know how they calculated that either. Uh, and then the crown chakra, the top of the head on people, is Mount Kalesh in Tibet. Kailesh, Mount Kailesh in mm-hmm. Tibet. So that's seven chakras for Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are many more vortexes than that on Earth. Sedona itself has seven of its own vortexes, if you can imagine. And Taos, New Mexico, is very loaded with uh, them, too. So... Um, Other places, uh, Table Mountain in South Africa is a vortex of potent energy. Machu Picchu, of course, but it's not associated with um, one of the chakras, but it's a vortex on on ley lines, a junction of huge cracks, huge deep cracks in the earth. Mm -hmm. Uh, We already talked about Uluru, but the holy men sent their people there for dream time uh, to get energy and for because of a belief that the rainbow spirit lives there, and um, it was very, it's it is to them very very holy. Uh, a, an island called Ese Vedra in Spain has positive energy. It's just a rock jutting out of the sea, like one of our sea stacks, a big sea stack. A source of positive energy. We talked about Mount Shasta and then Haleakala. 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 Called the House of the Sun. It's 10,000 feet high that we can see, but 20,000 feet coming up from the bottom of the sea. Very, very powerful place because, as you said, bad luck for people who take away yeah. a rock yeah. from Haleakalia. So um, when you... When you think about some are maybe clusters of these because Sedona has a, like a cluster mm-hmm. of vortexes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I just think um, it's very significant that Stonehenge and the Great Pyramid are on a vortex because it means that the detection of vortexes is scientific as well as spiritual. I'd me. like to see. I'd like to see a um, a layout of the world map if you opened up. It's on Google. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's all Google it just so we can Not see Google. how. Well, it's on uh, YouTube. You okay. have to put well, down the search block in YouTube. Sorry. I'm sure it's on Google as well. You could Gotta find be, it either yeah. way. Yeah. Everything is on YouTube. Yeah. And <laughs> everything is on All Google. the knowledge in the world is <laughs> on YouTube. Things you never knew <laughs> existed <laughs> and things you still know don't exist. <laughs> well, I'll have to give of all of these the big chakras and vortexes, and I'm not quite sure if they're the same at times, I'm guessing. There are more vortexes than chakras. The chakras are very significant. Well, even in my little, uh, where I lived for 25 years, little old Yuba City down in the Central Valley, mm-hmm. if you've ever been down through there, the Sutter Buttes stick up. Yes, there. yes there's now, so much like mud. I tell you, now I lived probably no more than, I don't know, seven or eight miles there. My wife and I, were the, she was an artist, and we she just, just used to love to go out in the springtime, especially the verdant green, and those hills are very sacred to the local tribe. They uh, are. My do, and uh, there was I can't the, remember the other one. The Pomo. No. No, but, that's not. But near there the... was a couple others. Anyway, but you know, and, and again, uh, she felt so much energy from that. And she painted. I've got a huge painting in my little apartment right now <laughs> that's a big uh, that she did of the buttes. My point is just it's it, they're pretty unique because if you come down like out of Highway Twenty. Going day if it's a clear day and there's no smog, you, the way those things it, oh they call it the smallest mountain range in the world number one. No, I mean interesting. Um, now mm. might have to fact check that, but that was the local. Oh. but they're beautiful. 
Yeah. They're beautiful with uh, all kinds of wildlife. Wild uh, again in the spring, the verdant green, the wildflowers. So we got energy just from those. Now it's not a world famous vortex, I don't think, or a chakra, but it was uh, to my wife, you know, and I too. And I often I look at those peaks sometimes that are so so symmetrical. They look like they could have been pyramids at one time in the distant past. Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah. They really do. It's, and, uh, and I think they're, the tallest one is over 2,000 feet, wow. I believe, which is, mm. you know, a little odd. Mm. Well, not, I mean, for that <laughs> place, the flat, the flat, like the flat, exactly. It's yeah, quite just, the site. And it, it could site. have been a volcanic eruption, I suppose, that came and just peaked up like that. But... It, it, it always dawned on me when I'm seeing anything like that that's so symmetrical, I always think, I wonder if that was a pyramid at one time and then it just grew over with... with uh, yeah. They, yeah, they had many... I uh, didn't get all the info there, but uh, a lot of legends, of course, around the Snutter mm-hmm. from the Native Americans who, yeah. unfortunately, here we go, there was a massacre there uh in the, I think, in the mid 1800s, that kind of drove the local tribes out. But right now, uh, you can take hikes through those Sutter Buttes, but it's all private ranch land mm-hmm. around them, mm-hmm. and they're very, very good about keeping people out. But you can do uh, hikes, uh, I think, once every other week during the spring and summer. Mm-hmm. You know, and they so and they it's limit on the people. It's on a reservation. No, no, it's actually private land all the mm. way around, cattle, oh. mostly oh. cattle ranching. Mm. So, mm. but again, I uh, I thought that was a unique little place down there. Mm. Hey, by the way, uh, yeah, again, if you want to comment or whatever, 541-661-4098 text line. And this is KCIW 100.7 here in Brookings, your all-volunteer community radio station. I think I have to say this is all going beyond my ability to comprehend. I always like the matter of fact thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when did all this start? I mean, is this, this is obviously well pre-biblical, I guess, that uh, we had these cracks and you know, chakras. And oh, why did they happen? And I'm who did them? Belie- and well, I'm more of a believer they- than that than I am most of the biblical stories myself. <laughs> you- uh, but that's me. He, well, he did say pre-biblical. Okay, okay. So, bottom well, line right now, Ray is still not a believer. And but the crack, I said I wasn't no, a believer. No, no, I, I don't know what the hell you're talking well, about. The crack, well, the cracks. All right. Pretty close so, to not how, believing. I mean, if we could go back to the to the beginning of how the Earth was formed in the first place, <clears throat> it, it had to have had a lot of, of volcanic activity in order to uh, um, spew up all of these mountains and become oceans and rivers and thousands, mountains and, thousands of volcanoes yes, on earth yes yeah. so so it would it would seem natural that there would be cracks that would have been well i, I don't have a problem with the cracks i just have a problem with the uh, the spiritual aspect of all this oh well there's there's something that we could probably do a little bit of of work with you to to get you to open up to the possibility well, not a little that... bit of work <laughs> not a little bit well well i'll, I'll do a, a transformation workshop with you sometime and teach you how to meditate how's okay, that okay i'll let you know when i'm available oh, all right. Right. and also <laughs> ray ray being an alaskan part-timer anyway i did come up with now this isn't a chakra or a vortex but one of the i was looking in mysterious areas around mm-hmm. the world southeastern Alaska is supposed to have uh, from the Klingit people. Klingit. 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 Again, mispronunciation. Yeah, go ahead. But anyway, that's supposed to be a very spiritual area. Uh, South Alaska, Alaska. Southeastern Alaska. Southeastern Alaska. So I guess is way out the, there uh, by the Lucians and all that. No, that's I'm sorry, southwest. the other way. The, it's called the Panhandle, the uh, Inland go. Passage. And there I sailed up the in- Inland Passage. I sealed up the Inland Passage, the part you're talking about, on a ferry as part of my honeymoon with my husband in 1970, and uh, it was it was amazing. Um, I felt definitely a hel- felt a spiritual feeling on that ferry mm-hmm. going up, and uh, I knew nothing. Uh, I knew very little about chakras. I'd been doing yoga, but I knew very little about chakras. But I 
also knew nothing about vortexes uh, or spiritual the spirituality of Sedona or the reputed spirituality of Sedona. Uh, so, yeah, um, sometimes you're caught unprepared. But then I was just married, so why shouldn't I be, you know, yeah, so feeling you were, thrilling power yeah, yes. <laughs> on a big boat when I hadn't been even on the ocean on a boat for, uh, 50, uh, well, <laughs> since I was 10, and there I was 20, so Yeah, 10 well, years. so in, in context of almost every situation we could put ourselves into, the context of the situation almost matters more than the, yes. than the content. Yes. 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 So you were on your honeymoon. So the context of that was you were ready to be spiritually right. enlightened. <laughs> yes. And seasick. Oh. <laughs> and I enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> that, that is a beautiful cruise, by the way. I've done that. And you, you're constantly in awe. I wanted to stay up all night so I wouldn't miss anything. <laughs> that, it, it, and yes. It's three days and two nights or three days and three nights, and I didn't want to miss a thing. It was from Vancouver to um, the um, Haines, to Haines, Alaska. Yeah. Mm. And my wife and I did a cruise up the the pass there. We didn't go all the way to Alaska, but to Prince Rupert, which is up yeah. north. But I'm going to mix the railroad and spirituality again, but this is crazy. So right before we were coming into Prince Rupert, which was the northern path, the furthest northern we were going to go, Canada, Anyway, we had passed through, again, beautiful, some of the be- most beautiful scenery I'd ever seen. Mm. So we're going to, it's early in the morning, we're pulling into per- Prince Rupert. There was a railroad line right there, and I, I saw a track inspector with the, who they get in the pickups and they get on the track to inspect the track. And I'm looking like, wow, you know, there's one of my jobs right there. And I, right alongside him were these three black and white dolphins just uh, going along. I mean, oh. I was like, wow, this guy's getting paid for wow. doing this? this uh, it's amazing. <laughs> it just, it, it's those yeah, kinds of yeah. things. Again, coming back from uh, Klamath Falls to Weed, those kinds of things. That's the energy that I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, oh, yeah, it was just pretty amazing. Well, I, I used to get asked that all the time when I worked in Toke, which is... Uh, the first town you get into when you commit to Alaska on, on, on the highway and tourists coming up with said, you get paid to work here? <laughs> and they go. hadn't even gotten to the pretty part of the state. Toke is pretty flat. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And when, on that cruise, I was in the cruise. Uh, that was the only one uh, we had ever been on. It, it was wonderful. I spent 90% of my time just up on the bow of the boat where there was hardly anybody. Uh, My wife, she loved to go, and that's great, loved to go in there, had the casino and the things. I didn't care for that kind of stuff. I just simply uh, enjoyed the sights on the bow of the boat. I liked the bow. I liked the stern. I liked watching the wake. And and there was no casino on the boat I was on. It was a ferry just for for people who were commuting, basically, and a few Mm -hmm. tourists. It sounds it sounds very much like we have a, a spiritual uh, in, interloper here in the studio <laughs> with the knocking on the tables. <laughs> uh, we should just send a text. They're building <laughs> a vortex. Up on the top. Oh, it's I a think. vortex above oh, okay. us. Yes, that must be. It. I, I'll have to tell him what the text number is. It's <laughs> if I can get it right. Five four one six six one four zero nine eight. You yes. can text text with any comment you may have about the show or, I guess, anything. Operator's getting kind of bored here, so. <laughs> Another you know, mysterious place I, I like to bring up, because I've been by it a few times, uh, Pyramid Lake in Nevada. They have, have the legends. I've never of, been there. Oh, my. Right. It's out. It's just north of Reno, about 45 miles, I think. But you feel like you're on another planet almost. Really? So desolate out there. There's no trees. But it's a beautiful, you know, mysterious lake. And the legend is that it's supposed to be linked to Lake Tahoe. They say bodies that have floated or they couldn't find in Tahoe came up at Pyramid. I don't think I've ever heard of that. But that's the legend. But it was part of this Lake Lahontan, which was huge thousands of years ago. Lake Tahoe was part of that. Walker Lake was part of that. It went into parts of Oregon. And that's uh, the Pyramid Lake was the deepest part of that lake. 
Uh, and that, this is what's left of it. it so has, maybe it was connected at some, at one time, and there oh, at one time, but and they're talking about a subterranean yeah a tube oh, a knows? tube that might bring it right. A yeah, body, what yeah. would cause a body to go Who from Lake knows? Tahoe under yeah. the mountains to Pyramid Well, Lake? I like don't it, know. Like the beginning of the show, this is the whimsical and fun topic. <laughs> okay, I have a whimsical thing, I think, go to talk oh, about. Ray, the non-whimsical yeah. person. Go ahead. <laughs> See, we're getting him already. Yeah, right. Th- this morning, in, in preparation to uh, do this show, I, I looked up uh, Power of Pyramids oh. hmm. and started out. Right, 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 right out of the chutes with this guy who made this pyramid that about it's about a foot tall out of concrete, and it's divided into four pieces. If you can picture a pyramid having those four sides, mm-hmm. and he separates this uh, these four pieces by about I don't know an inch and a half or two inch, and he talks about the amount of energy that's in this emitting from it and uh, he says oh you can put your electronic equipment in there and take it out and it, it won't recover for 15 to 20 seconds but he said that the uh, you know the energy is coming up and and he can stand over this for about five minutes and he gets some kind of refreshing or some uh, Feeling from that? Does anybody here have a comment about this? Oh, I do. Other than, I have other a comment than the fact about of, uh, it because um, one of my kids, long, long ago, um, uh, not yet an adult, when you go to concerts or festivals, you know, the places where they would sell um, weed paraphernalia, they'd also sell these pyramids, different kinds. But one of my kids came home with one from a festival or a concert. Like, he followed the Grateful Dead, you know, that gives you some idea. (laughs) Uh, So he um, had a pyramid made of seemingly pieces of straight metal fastened together so that it was only the corners, only the edges Mm -hmm. of the pyramid, and Mm -hmm. it was hollow completely, Uh you know, not glass on it or anything, you know, and he sat it on his dresser, and I don't know if he was holding his hands over it in the morning or if he was doing anything with it, just maybe looking at it. But I saw it one day, and I said... um, Oh, that's interesting. What is that for? He said, pyramid energy. Mm-hmm. Have, you haven't heard of pyramid energy? Now, this is before Google. I had ever, never heard of pyramid energy. Did you ever I, consider the idea, if he got it at a Grateful Dead concert, that it was probably a stash box? <laughs> a stash pot? A, st- a stash box. Oh, but it's it, got it, it, dope it was, in there. It was just the corners. It had nothing. It had no walls. It had no volume. You could put your hand right through the sides. It was just wires, like like wires in the shape of a pyramid. Oh, okay. And empty space. Right. The pyramid and shape. It's supposed to attract the energy without Skele- cement, skele- without... The, the skeleton of a pyramid. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, so who knows? <laughs> or the superstructure. So, um, yeah, you could have built a pyramid over it by, with pieces of paper or glass or cardboard or clear plastic, but no, it wasn't tied to stash. I knew where his stash was. <laughs> uh, so um, it was for pyramid energy. And um, since there was no Google, I didn't go any. F- oh, I did. I had a book about pyramid power later, but it was all woo woo to me. You know, at that time, it was just woo woo stuff. But you know, I came to be a person who meditates on chakras to give my, to draw healing power to various parts of my body to give me energy, but to give me healing. And uh, really, I believe in it sincerely because um, I, you know, I'm I act a lot younger than my age and. <laughs> I think that's the reason. So, this this guy that t- that had the concrete pyramids that he separated, he was talking about. There's a lot of research being done uh, that the energy from these pyramids can cure cancer. Oh, I'm sure there's. Uh, well, I, 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 hope, I, I hope that it, I hope that research isn't being funded by a government grant. I, oh, I, doubt, doubt I doubt it very seriously. Okay. Whenever I yeah. see these wacko things well, going also, on. Also, right? because concrete is man-made, I'd have very little. Mm-hmm. I'd have less confidence in a concrete pyramid than I would have on a bowl full of crystals of different shapes and different well, colors. Well, although yeah. concrete is made out of have, sand, it, it has, has crystals exactly. in it. He, he talked about the, uh, yes. the similarity between right. the yeah. pyramids and... Yeah. 
Well, before uh, next week's show, I'm going to try to get a pyramid and put it upstairs. Yeah, here. see, I, see I don't it. know if everybody's <laughs> yeah, it's the, the evil spirit found <laughs> it. Think, but anyway, we'll get yeah, through I, it. I, I think if we just took a concrete pyramid and threw it at that time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Feel the power of the pyramid. <laughs> oh, gosh. well, uh, well, again, uh, well, who said? Somebody said woo woo. I guess. Uh, uh, twice I said okay. woo. Oh, to, to oh. Ray's still in the woo woo phase. Well, and I was at one time, uh, <laughs> but in, until I got with my wife, a lot of the stuff is just it's uh, it, it can be powerful. Um, there, there is a story from um, when I was taking kids to Russia. We went up to this lake um, um, in Petoslav Zaleski, this huge lake, and we um, they took. The kids, we we walked around the lake, and there was a rock that seemingly didn't belong in the environment at all, and it was made out of this blue. Uh, the, this was a rock. They called it the blue rock, and it. I don't know what structural properties uh, are actually in blue rocks. I'm trying to think. It, it it's not malachite. Malachite would have been green, I think. But um, anyway, this was a, just a jagged rock out there in the, in, on the banks of this river. And they said, this is a magical blue rock. And if, you, if it is said, there's a legend that if you, if you take a little piece of this blue rock into your mouth and make a wish, your wish will come true. <laughs> and I just had to think of that because it was woo-woo. But all the kids got down and they took <laughs> so, but, well, well, did, did all the students have a have a bite of it? Or? All the students got. I, I I did not, but all the students did. They thought it was a, a wonderful idea. So, uh, how old were these students? Eight, Sixteen to eighteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we know what they were wishing for. Yeah, <laughs> you you got a good point. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, being an artist, my wife she painted that boy. It must have hauled around tons of rocks in my life. Oh, I it. bet. Wherever we would go. I know, I know we used to go down to the American River when I lived in Sacramento, near the American River. A lot of those nice, beautiful river rocks. Those oh, rocks. those are great. Oh, my. Yeah. She would paint on those all the time. Yeah. I would like. I had a duffel bag, and gosh, I got a good exercise. I probably should go out there and do that again. <laughs> but, yeah, always hauling rocks for her to paint on. And she believed the rocks had energy. And of I kind of think they do. They do. Man, you look out here in these, uh, out here in the ocean. Uh, what do we have out there? Okay, Prince, Prince Rupert, Prince. There's an I, an island right down where I live in Smith River, and it's going by me now. But any of these rock formations, that there are thousands of them along the mm -hmm. coast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think those are beautiful. Just sitting there watching, boy, when the waves are high and and, and, oh, and those yeah. waves hit and they crash, almost all the way over. That's just a, a beautiful thing. I've been yeah. out there to Chetco Point before. And when it was pretty rough and sitting on there, if you've ever been out there, probably yes. everybody had yes. those benches. They're just wonderful. And the waves were, uh, the spray was almost coming over there. Mm -hmm. It's just powerful stuff. It is, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. Well, we do live in a very powerful universe. And um, the, the what we have on this planet Earth, I think, is so amazing. And we really do have to recognize that we have to take care of it. We, yes, we, we just do. have to take care yes, of it. Yes, we do. And there's... Because the oceans are getting too hot, and um, a, lot of, a lot of the animals are dying. Sea creatures are dying because uh, the, the oceans are too hot. And, of course, it's affecting our weather. And, um, yeah, that's a whole different topic. It is. <laughs> but it relates to the body of Gaia. Gaia, yes, it does. It relates yeah. to the holiness of our Earth because yeah. if it's unique in the universe, as some Christians say, then it's, it couldn't be any holier and we should not mistreat it. And if mm -hmm. it's not unique in the universe, if, say, visitors from the Pleiades actually did come here and uh, give the Egyptians instructions for building the Great Pyramid yeah. <laughs> and other structures such as Mexican pyramids, and line, how to line them up with the solar system and the mm -hmm. sun and the moon. And so that calendars and the, that the sun and the moon and the pyramids become calendars because the sun and the moon rise over a certain corner or groove on the pyramid at a certain time of year. And also caves were built in England with grooves that would line up with the solstice rising of the sun. So these things, you know... Humans have been here a lot longer than we formerly thought. Yeah. Uh, what I was watching on YouTube last night was, what were humans like 
between 300,000 years ago and 60,000 years ago. That's the pre, uh, the the pre, um, the period that's pre uh, Neanderthal. Oh yeah, you mean the periods? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the uh, uh, now I forgot how to name the epoch. The uh, is it Mesozoic. Jurassic, Mesozoic, I don't know. Ju- right, right. I can only uh, remember so a couple. It's before the time that we used to think human beings started being human. That's what they're mm-hmm. saying. Yeah. It's pre cro magnon where we're measuring man's, uh, where we know, where we've seen a lot of tools. Now they're finding tools from that period, from 300,000 years ago to 60,000 years ago, with, whereas previously we could only judge something with 60,000 years old or newer, arrowhead, mm-hmm. whether it was arrowheads, mm-hmm. uh, burial sites manufactured things by people. Now we know that they were manufacturing things 300,000 years ago Mm -hmm. and they were human and they had the same DNA as us or we have parts of their DNA in us. Yeah. And um, the reason I was saying about how much older man is than we previously thought is because we have been learning for 300,000 years. We have been learning Math and architecture, science, geometry for three hundred thousand well, years. Really when, when did when did spirituality start? When they, did why did why did man thing. start having? Ray, as soon as they looked at the stars, you know, the minute they looked at the stars. Well, Good. and some people did say they, as soon as they started making abstract designs on bone and stone. So that when they started abstracting, like with crisscross designs and zigzag for lightning and stuff like that, when they started abstracting. Um, they were thinking about things beyond but what they, they could were, touch. They were, they were early humans or pre-humans, whatever you want to call them, before there was rock art or... or yes. Un- mm-hmm. Unless, mm-hmm. well, I, I suppose it's possible that they were drawing on trees and the trees fell down and well, we don't have right. it anymore. We don't have then very many things. Then they got smart things. and said, let's, uh, let's, let's use and Not very many things last 300,000 years for us to look at. Yes, yeah. it, uh, absolutely. Man was spiritual much earlier than we previously thought and uh, had a spiritual, had spiritual ideas about his soul and, and uh, his continuation on earth and the future and the past and things like that. Billy, you said about being a special area, I had to go back uh, to kind of meld a little bit of the scientific, if you will. Bill Gorham, when he was here, was talking about our ocean off of our coast here is one of the, I believe there were four uh, areas in the world that had just almost perfect conditions for, um, uh, gosh, now, wildlife and whales, that kind of a thing, mm-hmm. with the upwelling. Anyway, we do live in a, a special area. Not uh, so metaphysical, but scientific. And Bill's a PhD, a scientist, a marine biologist. Mm-hmm. But, you know, again, back to this place, uh, I would put it on my chakra or my vortex list anyway, because it's a, a real special place. Brookings, you're saying. Uh, yeah, whole this, whole, oh, this whole area. Central Oregon, uh-huh. Northern California. Yeah, mm-hmm. the whole thing. Mm-hmm. It's, so, it's yeah, a mysterious place. It I is. agree. You're, um, not a, you're not a fan of drill, baby, drill, are you? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I think that's uh, not. Yeah, I know I'm not a fan of that. Yes, I I don't I don't think I was um, here when you guys did that show on the wind, wind um, turbines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so is that on podcast now? Sure is. I'd yeah. like to listen to that. Oh, right me now. too. That I want to listen uh, to that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Bill's a pretty. Thank you, Billy, for reminding smart, us. Yeah. Smart and all, guy. all of these shows and all our listeners also should be reminded. You can look up our past shows. On the website. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. They're on the website and they're on podcast. You can get the podcasts all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. KCIW is a world you bet. station. Yes. It could be millions of people listening to it us. It could be. There could yeah. definitely be. And if you are listening and if this topic doesn't quite turn you mm-hmm. on, but you can text in 541-661-4098. Give us an idea of a topic you would want us to talk about here. Pretty informal, pretty low key. That's how we like it. <laughs> or if, yeah, if you'd like to become a member, oh, that of the, uh, I'm, I'm recruiting all the time. I have uh, two new people. I'm going to be introducing in the next couple of shows. Wow. So. Excellent. Yeah. Everybody. Awesome. And we're always. It's a great pickup line, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> 
Ray Hang Hang on. Ray. Huh? He's going for a different angle. There. That's why he's not so spiritual. You, you, you look like the type of lady who would like to be on radio. Huh? I, I was going to say, as well, we're always looking for people to volunteer as technical help. Um, our, our main engineer, Tom Bozak, back there, does so much work, and he could really use somebody that he could teach how to do all that work to take up the the challenge of, of uh, being a technical editor. Yeah. You bet. Yep. So you can you can text us about that at 541-661-4098. Or you could be one of the operators standing by. They get they get pretty busy here and get tired easily and we can give them a break. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Linda has been overwhelmed today. Yes. Texas <laughs> we got. <laughs> Well, we got uh, running down to, I, I don't know if Ray's seen the light yet, but is, or is he still uh, not believing all our spirituality here today? I'm, I'm not sure I've seen the light. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, just being facetious. I'll spend some more time looking for it, though. Okay, good. And, well, and, and, and Billy, I, I, w I will call you as soon as, uh, as soon as I'm ready to get there. See, the dichotomy here, Ray, is that you have to open up your eyes. But in order to open up your eyes, you must close your eyes. I get it. Sure. <laughs> That's so, cute. Or, or are you still right. trying to figure I, out I dichotomy? Say, I, I guess we can that. bypass that meeting now because you've just, you've just straightened that all <laughs> out for me. Sort of. Mm. <laughs> And I wouldn't want I wouldn't want to suggest that you you take anything chem chemical to allow that to happen for you. Yes. Oh, well, then I definitely no, don't no, want to no. have that meeting with you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I well, believe in better living through chemistry. <laughs> well, like I said, this has been a, a whimsical fun topic. Uh, I again want to credit my my wife for oh turning me on to all of this stuff, and I might not be a you know. 100% believer, I don't know, but I certainly have in my past felt the energy of these places that we've been talking about. Well, while we're preparing this show and trying to decide what exactly we wanted to talk about, um, other other areas come in that we thought we would get into today, but we did not. Uh, things like Area 51 and Roswell and... Uh, yeah. Loch Ness. Well, we have Loch, two, uh, yeah. well, we have two minutes. Oh, <laughs> I think I think I could say all that needs to be said about Roswell in, in, uh, in two minutes. Uh, I I I actually suffered through a, a another Roswell video this morning in order to bone up on it. Or, well, this will be another topic then for yeah. time, perhaps. Yeah. Well, that would, that would be uh, under the fictitious. Uh, category. Do you ever say fictitious when we, were, when we talk about whimsical and all that? Um, I can throw that in. Yes. Get a new, yeah, uh, yeah, we could you know, put it as an add on. You know, <laughs> you know and the, some of these, back to the Giza Pyramid, I wrote down, of course, Easter Island, too. It's, oh, yeah. I don't know if they have they really ever scientifically figured out how these people got these monstrous rocks yeah, yes, there. They, 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 they have. They've done okay. that. They've, there's these people that get some kind of a grant to reenact doing things like oh, that. Okay. And they gone out and stood up some of them and they basically so, just okay. rock them back and forth and on each rock they move they must have took a t must have taken quite a long time they didn't have, they, guess they had nothing else to do their, have, have you, their, have you okay. seen that that island Ain't no. nothing there, man. They had nothing else well, to do but well, walk these down. Well, they all the trees, I and know. and then they couldn't leave because they couldn't even build a boat, so they wasted the trees. Yeah, I so, don't know what what for. So and the sailors people. brought rats that that killed what trees there were. But yeah. where right, did the right. where did the rocks come from? They're right there. They they know right where they mined them, right in the, in the mountains or whatever. Oh, it's not like. Uh, not like Stonehenge, nice where Stonehenge they came 200 whatever. miles. Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's another one. Right. <laughs> this. Got some you know, pretty big athletic feats to get all that stuff there. Yeah. Well, we're winding down to yeah. a minute uh, to the, go. Yeah, these, these holy sites, they often have like um, multiple kinds of rocks transported from multiple places. And it's just, it, it's as if humanity has always wanted to create a mystery for the people who would be coming after them. And they had nothing else to do. 
That's Except right. It's not like they had Eat to be home and see their programs. <laughs> but no, a lot of, part of it was boredom. Uh, yeah, exactly. They didn't have had, their uh, iPhones. You know, we, we haven't done a damn thing in six years. Let's move some rock. All right. All right, Ray. <laughs> Ray is still not a believer, but maybe <laughs> maybe some other time. Hey, it looks like okay. we're getting close to an end. Thank you, thank you very much for tuning in. This has been the Curry Cafe on KCIW in beautiful Brookings, Oregon. <laughs>